TYT Sports, everybody. Turks and Jerks now are Jerks of the Week. I will start uh, once again. We're starting again here? Here with Michael Shore. I guess your Turk of the Week was from uh, from the, the Cleveland-Atlanta game, and you, you inferred that maybe we would get the Jerk right, of the what Week. What is the Cleveland-Atlanta game? I mean, the game is Cal, right, versus... Cal, right, Cal yeah. Stanford is the game. Yeah. Oh, I, so I, I was... Mike and I do this thing where we used to... Uh, another friend of ours, uh, uh, I don't even want to mention his name, Jimmy Altman. We used to play this game where we would call each other after the football season ended and name Monday night games that had never happened. It's right? a good game. It's a fun game. Right. Like teams... Not only Monday night games that had never happened, but teams that have never played. Right? Yeah. Um, and Cleveland and Atlanta have never played. No, they've never They've played. never no, played. No, 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 no. <laughs> never right. once have those teams It's like the Jackson, up. Jacksonville versus the Cardinals, for example. Jacksonville and the Cardinals have never played. It's a little unfair with Jacksonville. Right. Like you want to kind of go, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys have been too in, new, but they're too not new. to anybody else at this table. I know, not to you. Yeah. You guys play some real weird games. But have you ever remember Cleveland and Atlanta playing? No. Yeah. But my see. sample see. size is not nearly as much. They've never years. played. It doesn't matter. It's the first Ever. Yesterday ever. Was the they didn't play in the 60s. Time. They didn't play in the 70s. Nope. They didn't play in the 80s. They played the 90s. It's their first game ever. Yep. So you have your jerk from that. My jerk of the week. Uh, the coach <laughs> of the Atlanta Falcons, Mike Smith, the most inane uh, use of a timeout I've ever seen. Well, that's not true. That's a little hyperbole. But it was just ridiculous, and it cost them the game. Calls a timeout, 55 seconds left. He, he, after the game, the two things that he said, the two reasons he gave, because then they got the field goal, and the Browns had 44 seconds left. They came back and win the game. He said was, well, if I hadn't called it, they were going to call it. Yeah. So that's the worst reason to call a timeout. Yeah, also, as it turned out, uh, uh, and, and here's what would happen then if Cleveland, assuming that everything would have been the they same. They would have called, they wouldn't have been able to, yeah. They would have kicked the field goal uh, from 11 before yards. The Austin, early, and, before and they, the Austin. And they might have missed it. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Um, so, yeah, if they were going to, then let them call it. He single-handedly lost that game yeah. with that Mike, Mike Smith's inability to understand time and timeouts and sort of down and distance when to go for it, when not to. Mike Smith did one great thing to me, was when going for it in overtime against the Saints at the 29-yard line, mm. at a point when the Saints scored every time they had the ball. Yeah. So to me, you punt and move them back 45 yards. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They're yeah. going to come kick a field goal, yeah. win the game. I would have kept the ball and tried to win the game. Right. I like that point. It didn't work. Yeah. But I like that. And so in for years, it, in my head was, Mike Smith is ballsy and he gets it. He gets that. I don't care. Yardage doesn't matter. We cannot stop Drew Brees. We cannot do it. But it turns out he doesn't get it. He doesn't yeah. get it at all. That was a terrible timeout. Uh, I, I mean, if he'd said it was too big a play and I needed to call timeout, we just, Matt, Ryan, I didn't think, I think we needed the offense to talk and or I knew the risk. Or if he just says it was a bad timeout and we got unlucky. I just thought it was a good timeout because I thought that we couldn't make a field goal 53 yards was outside of our range. Yeah, so I'm saying, so you know, we're saying the same thing. If yeah. he'd said, I needed to plan that play. Yeah. That, that was critical that we talk about that play. Um, although, then, if you're that team, you might say, so maybe I'll wait 15 seconds and then call the timeout, and yeah. I'll see if Cleveland calls it. So either yeah. way, there was no reason to rush yeah. that timeout. And he, he could have looked to see if Cleveland He's a jerk of the week because very likely he could have, that, that uh, timeout cost them the game. It could well have cost them the game, which means it could have cost them a playoff spot, which means it could have cost him his job. Because right. even if they'd struggled somehow and finished seven and nine and won the division, and then if they win a playoff game, yeah. you know. I but now we got the now the Saints have an opportunity at home tonight to retake control of that division. So for a game that was never played on Monday Night Football, it just hasn't been played for the first time ever. They haven't. No, no. It's not Monday Night Football. The fun thing was naming the random Monday Night Football game because it was inconceivable that that would be a Monday Night Football. Game. They've never played. They've never, they've never played, played at all. They never played at all. No. Never played no. at all. First Cleveland. time on the field. Yeah, First Mike time Phipps ever never saw Steve Bartkowski. Uh, <laughs> never Brian happened. Sipe never Brian played. Sipe never went into Atlanta you Fulton guys. County Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> never happened. Never. Happened. But yesterday changed all that, which is why we've given it such strong shrift here. <laughs> uh, you're a jerk of the week. I do. I have a good. I think I have a good jerk, and that is if it's as good as your Turk. It's it's a lot of competition here. So, uh, JJ Watt for MVP. Anybody who thinks that is going to happen is a jerk. And it's so very it's simple. The, it's the people who probably don't exist who think you're going to No, no, no there's a lot of... Oh, in the uh, Houston as, area, as, I'd imagine. As Houston. As, are you going to make me rip Houston again? As, who lives in Houston? Who likes living there? <laughs> Sorry, go on. As Francis would say, the pundits mm -hmm. yeah. of the NFL world have come out and said that J.J. Watt should be MVP. This is multiple sources. Multiple places have come out and said this. Sports Talk Radio everywhere. I think it's insane to think that J.J. Watt's an MVP. First of all, you don't give an MVP to a team that's 5-6. and six. It might not make the playoffs. 
Yes, you don't give a defensive MVP. Because you don't give. Yeah. You also well, that too. you probably don't give an MVP either. I know what you're saying, but he doesn't lead a team. It's a stretch to give a, a, the MVP to a defensive player. Right. Probably doesn't happen very often. I can't imagine when it last did. Uh, he uh, doesn't lead the Lawrence team. Taylor Lawrence, I was going to say Lawrence Taylor yes. is the only one. He I has caught it. two reception touchdowns this year, and he's also had some interception returns for touchdowns, and he swats passes, and he's an unbelievable defensive player, one yeah. of the top in the league. But he's also getting paid. Elite quarterback money. That, doesn't, that, can't, that can't factor in. Though. I think that's a major factor in the Houston Texans organization, in oh. terms of that they can't find a competent quarterback to lead them yeah, to the but playoffs. If they had, but, like the but, but they didn't really. But have I mean, they had a second to do that. I mean, yeah, they, they also they didn't. It's not because J.J. Watt makes all that money that they don't have a quarterback. Yeah, because well, Matt Schaub didn't work out. They didn't draft the the, the people that they had already weren't good last year. They brought in Fitzpatrick, who was capable but not good. Um, they traded to get Mallet. Didn't they trade for Mallet? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so these are what I would call poor choices by the Houston okay. Texans. But that has nothing to do with whether. But that or has not nothing to do Watt. with uh, JJ Watt should be the MVP, and he shouldn't. But I keep hearing it. I keep seeing it around. I keep seeing it on Twitter. Who should be MVP? As of right this second, Tom Brady's the MVP. Yeah, that I, don't makes sense. I, I don't think there's a problem in naming a uh, defensive player MVP if it's no. overwhelming. But that team. But if, like, if Houston had the same quarterback situation, if they benched Ryan Fitzpatrick for ineffectiveness, if Ryan Mallett had come in and Make they JJ were Walker nine and two anyway because of a yeah. Colt like because of a Raven like defense, you know, then you, then, you know Ray Lewis type or and you know then you'd think well maybe this this guy in this defense is so overwhelming, but he hasn't transformed the defense. Andy Dalton at one point yesterday uh, was seventeen of nineteen. Yeah. you know it wasn't and and we saw how bad Andy Dalton can be, so they don't. He's not a transformative defensive player. He's, he's almost certainly the best defensive lineman in the NFL. There's no question. He's a great player. Great, great yes, player. But, but not an MVP. I would agree. On a random, I, I, I would make the Marco got, Murray mine over, over Brady. That's also a very viable option. Uh, there's also a tweet from Adam Schefter as an honorable mention for a jerk of the week. Not Adam Schefter. Uh, Mike, I think it's in the... There we go. Colt McCoy's only Redskins quarterback this season to start and finish a game as the winning QB. Right. Not Adam Schefter, just the Redskins quarterback situation and everything. But we beat up on the Redskins too much. By the way, Dan Snyder, also jerk of the week. Dan Snyder, we jerk have to of mention the week. This. Yeah, Dan yeah, Snyder, that's fine. Jerk I forgot that we were doing jerks of the week. Um, <laughs> Dan, oh, Jesus, I, I mean, that game was so, again, winnable. You guys, the, you know, it was the worst Niners, football game, worst but, football game I've ever yeah. played. There's, by the way, there's also nothing worse than 49ers football. Oh, but let's it, talk, they are the have dullest the 49ers team in football. Have they ever played the Redskins before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they played a lot. Very I don't understand the he game. He doesn't get the uh, game. My jerk of the week is Dominic Rayola, uh, the Lions center. That's Did you follow this at the end of the game? Yeah. So this is crazy. This guy is an idiot to an extent that I, you know it's possible because these are professional athletes. Yeah. But he, so the Patriots lead this game 27-9, and after they're trying to run out the clock, and after a penalty, they get a first and goal of the one inside of two minutes. They can take a knee. And you can make a whole other segment of whether Bill Belichick should it's take a jerk knee. of the week. <laughs> but I think when you're at the one, and if you want, if you want to play, you're allowed to play, and you want to run into the end zone and make it thirty-four. I disagree with that. I think you should. But I, but I, hold on. But yeah. let's let's that's a de totally debatable point. I would take the knee, but it's okay with me if you run in in professional football, and from the one with that much time left. Because in a sense, to me, taking three knees on the two. Is a little like, especially in a game you've dominated. But you dominated, and you're crushing. Right. It, so, but yeah. in a sense, but if you'd been a hard-fought game and it was 16-10, more reason to take the knee than if you're. Uh, to me, it's like ugh, you've got it down. You're going to score again. Just score. Give us the ball. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't care. I don't mind if people playing. But here's what you can't do: you can't line up to take a knee and then go for it. And the Patriots didn't do that. They lined up their offense. They clearly weren't taking a knee. They ran a play. They scored. The Lions get the ball back. At some point during the Lions' drive, they're now two-game inability to score a touchdown. It became clear, hey, let's not get a touchdown now. Right. <laughs> right? This is not. So they decide to take a knee, and they line up in the victory formation, which in Detroit is an L. And so they line up in the defeat formation, and then Dominic Rotola lunges forward. Rayola. Rayola. What did I say? Rotolo. Dominic Rotolo. Uh, who's uh, Rotolo? Who's a Rotolo? Vin Rotolo. Is some, somebody. Somebody on Howard, maybe? So Dominic Rayola then <laughs> lunges oh, no. at... Joseph Rotolo. Yeah, Joseph Rotolo is on, on Twitter. He's a Twitter guy. He's a Twitter yeah, follower. That's right. that's okay. right. So Dominic <laughs> Rayola it was Joseph. That's right. So Dominic Rayola <laughs> lunges at Zach Moore of the Patriots. And he didn't hurt him, but he could have. And, and then after the game, he made no effort, no apology whatsoever. He said, I cut him. We took a knee, so I cut the nose. They went for a touchdown at two minutes. They could have taken three knees, and the game would have been over. 
I mean, it's football. You want us to keep playing? Let's play football. No big deal. It's football. What was it? It was football. It was football. So, you know. At least he didn't say, well, I didn't do it. I didn't intend on it. I mean. He said, I did it. I did it on said, purpose. I did it. I did it on purpose. I did it, I did it on purpose. Got, but, but there's another thing. Like, even if you think that Bill Belichick shouldn't have gone for that, right? The other, what you would like a guy like Dominic Raiola to think is, we got our ass kicked. And I wish he hadn't done that. But, like, I don't. You don't get to have your ass kicked and then go, you guys should have taken a knee. You humiliated us. You're a professional athlete, man. And you don't go right, and hurt there, another there, player. There is a code. Whether or not the code exists, uh, should exist, or is, uh, is right I, is another thing. But I understand. I'm not endorsing what he did. But I, I understand his frustration and his anger. I, and no, no. You're either. fucking. Sometimes you are so full of shit. It's amazing. No, I, it's different. Like his frustration is to I'm be with him. Shit. What? Well, I do. I think you're full of shit. We're having what? an argument. What? The uh, I, what? What is his? What is he? His ha- frustration what? is is they got their asses kicked all day. So try to hurt somebody? It's what? an F. It's an F. You get no. There's no equivocating on this. No, I, this happens. I'm in- not equivocating. What I'm saying is I'm I'm I understand his frustration. I didn't say. I also at the same time said don't do that. But it but. I understand. I understand how pissed he must have been at the Patriots. I, I kind of like that he said, "Yeah, I did it." You know, I mean, he's going to get fined. I do like fine. that part he's of it. Gonna... But you can't. I, do, I, I like that he said he did it, and I'm, he'll probably get fined. He'll but get you... fined, and he may get suspended. And he probably should. You know? But I would never, were I a professional athlete, and never when I played in high school did I think I am so mad on that team for running up the score on us. The frustration is supposed to be with you, particularly at the professional yeah, level. But I mean, in high, in high school, it's different. Look, if somebody's, if they're beating us 56 nothing, we didn't have a football team, and they're like, and they're, you know, doing this as they inter- turn an interception down the sideline, yeah, they're being yeah, jerks. But, but, but there's, there's, there's this feeling of like being, losing to a classless winner sucks more than just losing. So in, in his translation, he's lining up there and he's, I can't fucking believe that these people are going to try and score on me again. And it, frustration, it's like road rage. And that's basically what he had. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, I, he is a great candidate for jerk of the week, but. Here's that's what all. Bill Belichick said. I'm sure there's a lot of frustration there from Rayola. That was obvious. He's never beaten us. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, so anyway. Uh, all right. So uh, that uh, wraps up uh, Turks and Jerks uh, for this week. I believe it does. But I want to ask Marshawn Lynch real quick one more time. Who is his Turk of the week? Oh, oh yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs>